We have a saying in Asgard, where there are wolf's ears, wolf's teeth are near. It's a trap. He's lying. Just playing games. Add me for a sec, Loki. My ears are sharp, too. Here's the deal. Fugitive variants been killing our Minutemen. We haven't been able to find them. So let's bring in an expert. That's me. The criminal could be anywhere, anytime. We gotta be careful. Anything we do can impact the course of history. You get that? Loki! Loki! Right on cue! The timekeepers are monitoring every aspect of this case. Trusting this man is not a good idea. No one bad is ever truly bad. And no one good is ever truly good. This isn't about you. Right. Loki, wait! I believe, stupidly, you could be whatever you want to be, even someone good. By the way, I should have an equal amount of security. This is insulting. You just can't help yourself. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my Loki Episode 5 trailer video, Loki Into the Loki-verse. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and a bunch of footage from the next couple of episodes, really like the final two episodes, because there's only six episodes total. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos, because after Loki, we're actually going to be getting the Marvel What If episodes, and that'll start in August, so we won't have to wait too long to get the next big Marvel series on Disney+. Plus. We'll get a couple trailers for that really soon, but we're also doing a big Disney Plus giveaway for memberships as part of that. All you have to do to enter, just be a subscriber and post all your theories about what's really going on here with the Timekeepers, the TVA, and really quick spoiler warning if you haven't seen any of the Loki episodes yet, obviously we have to talk about all the big twists so far. But the beginning of Loki episode 5, obviously just picking up immediately in the events after this Loki in the episode 4 post credit scene wakes up on this trash planet amidst all these other Loki variants. They may or may not be inside a pocket dimension, but this reveals that the people that the TVA were getting rid of seemingly with their wands, the time reset devices, deleting them from the timeline, weren't actually getting deleted. They were just getting sent to this trash planet. Whereas before, we assume, based on Miss Minute's explanation the events of Episode 1, they were all being erased completely from the timeline. Loki even joked in Episode 2 that it looked like they were actually melting people and things with those time reset devices, which itself was meant to be a funny reference to the Thor Ragnarok joke of Thor having to watch the Grandmaster's henchmen get melted grotesquely. This whole twist with the trash planet also kind of explains the big twist of the multiverse. Like, the multiverse existed before the Loki series, but the way they explained things with Loki Episode 1 created so much confusion in the fandom. There were so many questions about, wait a minute, if there's only one sacred timeline, how do you explain the other worlds of the multiverse? My explanation then, I think, is still valid now. So the idea is that you have this giant river of time, like a greater timeline to describe a multiverse as it exists right now. Where in all these different universes, different versions of Earth, however you want to think about it, you have people doing things that are just a little bit different, but the things that they do that are different aren't so big that they create big branching timelines. It's only when people like Sylvie, people who are really different or create events with Infinity Stones that are very different, very powerful events, that those lead to the creation of another branching timeline that becomes a fully alternate reality. And at least per Miss Minute's explanation in episode one, those are the people that the TVA goes after to quote unquote delete, although now we're finding out that they're not deleting anything. So like I said in my last big post credit scene video, it's kind of like a minority report situation, like them going after people who might cause problems to the sacred timeline. Like, you know, you might create an event in the future that could create a branching timeline, so we're going to get rid of you before you actually commit that crime. But it sounds like at the beginning of the episode, our Loki gets the big info dump explainer from these other variant Lokis. The Kid Loki, Classic Loki, Richard E. Grant, Boastful Loki, even Alligator Loki. 
I love that people are wondering if the Richard E. Grant voice, like his voice, is actually coming from Alligator Loki, not from classic Loki. Like, what if the alligator is the one that's speaking? But while they're giving him that info dump, like, this is why you need to come with us or you will die. This is what's going on with this trash planet. At the same time, back in the TVA, in the timekeeper's room here, Renslayer will probably be spilling the beans to Sylvie about what's really going on with the timekeeper robots and how she's connected to this massive pyramid scheme, apparently. I think it's still important to remember Loki's quote from the trailer at the beginning of the video, no one is ever truly bad or truly good. They kind of foreshadowed the whole Dark Knight-esque twist of the TVA when Mobius was talking about jet skis back in episode 2. Everything good eventually gets ruined. So I think it's pretty clear that when the TVA was created initially, it was with good intentions and there was a need for it at that time. But over time, they went full Hydra algorithm and started getting rid of people minority report style. Anyone who might become a threat at some point in the future, no matter how minor, was treated as if they had already committed a crime against the sacred timeline. And also over time, their dogma about the sacredness, the religious way that they treat the timeline got worse and worse and worse. And all the lies about the timekeepers grew deeper and deeper and deeper. There's a ton of other brand new footage too, confirming our theories about Mobius. Pretty much everybody had the theory, especially after what happened to Loki, that Mobius didn't actually get deleted. He just merely got teleported somewhere else. We see a version of Mobius that looks exactly like he did when he was being deleted, quote unquote, hit with those wands. But he's driving an old gas car, swerving around a version of the Great Sphinx of Egypt. But like a lot of things on this trash planet, the Sphinx is sitting in the middle of a grassy field. Like it's not really supposed to be here, but somehow wound up here. I think the whole scene with the USS Eldridge explains how all the buildings and structures wind up here from other timelines, like the wrecked Avengers Tower in the background too. You see a version of the USS Eldridge getting portaled in, or seeming like it gets portaled in and dropped right on the ground. The cool side note here too, when you see the USS Eldridge winding up here, it seems a little bit like the portal effect when you see other ships in the MCU in space travel through those wormholes. Like during Guardians of the Galaxy 2, when they travel to Ego the Living Planet, they open those jump gates. You see them open a jump gate, it's like a hexagon looking shape, and it's them opening a series of wormholes through different sectors of the universe, allowing them to travel what seems like faster than light, but really it's using wormholes. So because the visual effect is very similar, that might be how the wands work, kind of like the Bifrost, opening wormholes. And if it wasn't clear, that is what the Bifrost does. It opens a wormhole. But the whole joke of the USS Eldritch it implies that the TVA hunters are on a mission during the events of the real-world Philadelphia experiment, and they're the cause of the ship disappearing. If you're not familiar with the USS Eldritch in real life, it's part of the famous US Navy Philadelphia experiment. There was even a sci-fi movie series that they created based on those events. America's military was trying to create a real-life cloaking device that would work kind of like Star Trek Klingons cloaking devices, rendering it fully invisible to the human eye for a short period. The myth is that the ship disappeared briefly amidst some mysterious green fog. They did a couple of tests, but then reappeared. But the urban legends and the tales about it go on to say that sailors got fused to the bulkhead. Some of them went mad. So as you would expect, a lot of those events got turned into big sci-fi movies. Later reports in real life tried to debunk a lot of those claims, though. But this is the Loki series just playing on that joke that the stealth technology didn't actually work. It was the TVA who was responsible for the Eldritch disappearing. Then in another scene, you see them confronting President Loki. I love his reaction too. Like, come on, what did you expect? Like, he's talking to our Loki, who's like, what is going on here? And I love the idea that President Loki is still trying to get these other henchmen here to vote him into office. Like, vote President Loki of the trash planet. Like, even though we're living in the apocalypse, he's still trying to rule over everything that's left in the apocalypse on this battle world scenario here. And yes, there have been a lot of people that have been making references to secret wars and battle world because that was an amalgam planet made up of all the bits of the surviving universes. And that's kind of what's happening here. Like, you have the bits that survive the deletion of a lot of other timelines. So it's an amalgam planet. Then we see Sylvie on that planet with Loki together, so at some point, she either has someone send her here with the wands or a time reset device, or she just uses one of the TVA temp pads. There's another scene of Loki with his dagger on fire, flaming dagger Loki, challenging something up in the sky. Not clear what that's going to be, but it's some big fight that he's getting ready for. Then there's a scene of King Loki on a version of Asgard in our next big celebrity cameo. I believe this person right here on the right is Walt Simonson, who was already canonized in the MCU as an Asgardian. I believe he had a cameo during the first Thor movie during a dinner scene. But this is sort of like a Stan Lee cameo style scene. 
If you're not a big comic book reader, Walt Simonson is just one of the biggest classic Thor comic book writers at Marvel next to Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. So he wrote a lot of the stories that are the basis for the stories that Marvel adapts for the movies and Thor. But for the most part, next to Stan Lee's actual cameo scenes, Walt Simonson is like the next level Stan Lee cameo. We did have Jamie Alexander's cameo seen as Sif during episode 4, but this is just the first time in the Loki series that we have a comic creator doing a cameo scene like Stan Lee. Then there's all the footage and the scenes of Loki approaching a really dark, black looking citadel which might be on the trash planet or it could be somewhere else. I think the implication here though is that it will lead them to whoever is really behind all this nonsense with the timekeepers and the TVA. And I still love the dueling theories that somehow yet another, more evil, more mischievous version of Loki is behind this. Agatha Harkness style, it was Loki all along. I also feel like whoever is behind this, Miss Minutes is also connected to it in a deep way too. Like she is somehow the algorithm, the software that runs everything that the TVA does. But someone would have had to create her originally. So there is probably somebody, some person behind all this that we'll find out about. Sylvie also seems like she has some huge fight scene in this great room here in this big black citadel. So I think the idea here is that we're going to get our next big Wizard of Oz style reveal. But when Loki said that he was going to burn this whole place to the ground in episode 1, I think they will pay that off. But let me know in the comments whether you think that that's going to be literally burning it down, like he's actually going to physically burn it down, or just metaphorically burn it down. If they do burn the TVA to the ground, and they were the ones that were policing the timeline, doesn't that then create a huge opportunity for people like Kang the Conqueror to exploit the timeline to their benefit? Everyone post all your theories in the comments below. My full Loki episode 5 video will post next week and then we're probably going to get a new Marvel What If trailer really soon. I did just do a first look breakdown of all the brand new Spider-Man suits that they just revealed. He's going to have three new suits so I'll put a link for that in the description. There's also a rumor that we're going to get a brand new Venom 2 trailer next week too so whenever that does come or if it comes of course I'll do a video for it. Everyone click here for my full Loki episode 4 video and click here for my Loki post credit scene video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.